So we've talked about how structs and classes can be used to create abstract data types that group together sets of variables and functions. But I want to show you one other type of class today that actually is not really a class at all. That is the template class, or more precisely, the class template. And a class template is a template for creating different kinds of classes. It'll make more sense if we use an example. So let's say I create a class, and we're gonna call this class node. And node is a sort of object that you'll use a lot in something like a linked list, which I'll talk about in the future. But in our class node, we are going to have one member variable, that'll be public, and we are going to call this member variable data. Now, what data type should I use for data? Well, it's going to depend on the node. Maybe this node is designed to store integers, or maybe it's designed to store a float. Maybe I also want several different types of nodes to hold different types of data. And rather than define a different class for every different type of node that I want to create, what I'll use is called a template. So I can say template, and then I need to create what is essentially a variable for data types. And I'll say type name, and I'm going to call it T. And I need to spell that correctly. So now rather than specifying that data is going to be a float, I can say that the data is of type T. So now I can create an instance of node and specify int as my data type. And data here will be of type integer, or I can use float. And we can see this pretty easily if I actually use it. And let's not forget our semicolon. So in my main function, let's include node.hpp. And let's instantiate it. So node. And I need to hear, rather than as we did before, like if I say node n, I can't actually do that because node is not itself a class. It is a class template. So I have to create a specific class out of this template before I can use it. And I do that simply by specifying int, which defines our term t here, our type name. So by specifying int in these braces here, I create a specific class out of my template node, and that is a node int. So now I can say n.data equals 5. And let's create another one for comparison. So I'll say node, and let's say this is a character node. We'll call this c. And I'll say c.data equals a. So I'll tell it to print out the values for each of these. And I'm going to put in a breakpoint here. That way we can look at what these are holding during runtime. So if I run this program, It'll stop at my breakpoint, and I can see that n holds data of type int, where c holds data of type character. So by using a template class, or more specifically a class template, I can create a sort of class that can be later specified for its data types. Now, one important thing to note about the class template is that I have to define all of my member functions within the same file as my template definition itself. So if I have a function, I'm going to specify the return type of t, and I'm going to call it get data. Now, I can't actually leave it there. I have to define get data in the same file. So I can add my curly brackets and just say return data. You'll see that if I try to instantiate this or define this in the C++ file, I would say int node 
get data, I'll get an error. And that is because Node itself is not a class. It's a template for making classes. So I have to actually define my member functions in the header file. So if this video was useful for you, please leave a like. It helps me grow the channel and it will help other people find the video. And again, if you would like to see these tools used in a broader context, I recommend checking out my Developer Diary series where I am working long-term on big projects and actually putting these tools to use. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.